What's going on, guys, and welcome to my Friday Night SmackDown audio review for March 19, 2021. I am Graham G.S. and Matthews. Hope you guys are doing well. And following kind of a lackluster string of SmackDown shows lately, I thought this show was a step back in the right direction. Because really, overall, since Roman Reigns returned in August, SmackDown has been a pretty good show. I date it back to when, really, again, Roman Reigns returned in late August, and um, he has been the thing to watch on SmackDown every week now. Even when SmackDown, like the last two weeks, I thought two weeks ago it sucked. Last week's show wasn't that much better. This week's show was actually pretty damn good. Um, even when we have shows like that, like last week and the week before, Roman Reigns is still the thing to watch on SmackDown literally every single week. He makes SmackDown, maybe not overall, but he is must-see programming, is Roman Reigns. And that was once again the case this week. But I thought overall it was just a better show. And there's a lot of stuff I'm digging on the blue brand beyond just the Roman Reigns stuff. So we'll get into all of that in just a moment. Uh, before we go any further, though, I do have to mention this. My exclusive interviews from this past week. We got a couple of them, actually, here on the channel. If you're subscribed to the channel, and if you're not already, first of all, you should be. Second of all, why aren't you? Uh, we had a lot of cool content going up this week beyond just the original, you know, the regular content. That being the SmackDown audio stuff, Raw Talk reviews, hashtag, WrestleRant radio excerpts, stuff like that. But we also had three exclusive interviews go live on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. So usually, like, there's at least one, sometimes two, very rarely three. One of them was a video interview. The other two were audio interviews. So one came up on Tuesday here in the channel, um, that being with the star that portrays Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, of course, um, on Young Rock on NBC. We talked for like 15 minutes about the show, his acting career, his interactions with The Great One. Uh, so that went up in video form, and it's very rare I do video interviews, but that went up on Tuesday. The article version you can read on whatculture.com. Wednesday was my interview with NXT superstar, one half of the NXT Women's Tag Team Champion, Shotzi Blackheart. That was a cool conversation, talking all about NXT, her title win, stuff like that. So that audio interview went up here on the channel on Wednesday. Um, it was also included in WrestleRant Radio on Thursday and an article form on Thursday on DailyDDT.com. And then on Friday was my exclusive interview with, which we're going to tie into here with the SmackDown review, SmackDown superstar Daniel Bryan, talking about his fast lane match with Roman Reigns and so much more. Him being just a great father, people he would love to wrestle, um, almost retiring, or really retiring in 2016, and what he wished he had changed about his mindset at that point. A lot of cool topics covered with Debray for almost a half an hour, too. Uh, most of the conversations I have with people have to go fairly short. Not too, too short, but like 15, 20 minutes. He was gracious enough to give me like almost 30. We talked so much that he went like we went overboard, and it was kind of my fault, but it ended up working out. It was a great interview, and that went up in audio form on Friday and an article form that same day on Bleacher Report. So three different outlets, three different interviews, three different uh, videos you're going to have to check out here on the channel. And again, if you aren't already subscribed, what the hell are you waiting for? You get cool content like that audio reviews of all the stuff on the network and now on Peacock, Q&A videos, podcast excerpts, and so much more. WandaVision reviews, Falcon and the Winter Soldier reviews. That's going up either tomorrow or Monday. Uh, we reviewed Howard the Duck on Monday, myself and uh, Chris Mueller and some other people, Rob and Katie Schamberger. That was a ton of fun. So again, if you're not already subscribed, what the hell are you waiting for? Please do so now. I would greatly appreciate it. So let's get into the SmackDown show from Friday. I did think it was a pretty good show overall. We kicked off the evening with a SmackDown Women's Championship match. Why, I have no idea. Between Sasha and Nia Jax. Now, to be fair, from a storyline standpoint, Nia technically does deserve a title shot. Now, she's a Raw wrestler. She's already won half of the WWE Women's Tag Team Champions. There was absolutely zero reason to think that she would win the SmackDown Women's Championship on this show. There is a better chance of Sasha and Bianca becoming tag team champions on Sunday, which I'm starting to think they might, considering that, um, you know, maybe they'll win them and then immediately lose them to Tamina and Natalia. I have no fucking clue. But the only reason I say that is because why, are, why else are they doing the match again? Which I talked about a week or two ago, but why else are we getting Sasha and Bianca versus Nia and Shayna again at Fastlane after we already saw it one time before and it was completely pointless then at Elimination Chamber? But anyway, so Nia, from a storyline standpoint, did deserve the title shot because she did pin Sasha, which was never acknowledged. This was not the reason why they did the match, but I'm making excuses for them here. Um, it was at Elimination Chamber, actually, in the tag team title match, Nia pinned Sasha to retain the tag titles. So they do the match here. 
you knew Nia wasn't going to win. They've had some decent matches before. I just could not care less about Nia Jax. It was a decent match, a decent opener. It was a championship match. But anyone who thought that it would be Bianca Belair challenging for the SmackDown Women's Championship against Nia Jax at Mania 37 would be completely out of their mind because there was no chance of that happening. So this was fine. It furthered the feud before Sunday, and yet we still got Bianca and Shander later on in the show. Again, I enjoyed this show, but that was complete filler. So we had Rollins out promoting big news. I'm not exactly sure what the big news was, but he was addressing Cesaro and his attack on him last week, which I said last week was very well done, only to be interrupted not by Cesaro, but by Shinsuke Nakamura. So I said last week with the stuff they were teasing with Murphy and then with Nakamura after Rollins walked backstage, I was fearful, and again, this would be a great match, but it's not WrestleMania worthy. I was fearful they would do Rollins and Murphy against Nakamura and Cesaro in a fucking tag team match at WrestleMania. It does not look like that's going to be the case. I, I thought they would do Cesaro and Rollins at Fastlane and then, you know, do the tag team match at WrestleMania. Thank God that is not the case. Instead, we are getting Nakamura and Rollins one-on-one at Fastlane in a Survivor Series 2018 rematch. And I think that's great. You know, Nakamura's kind of in that stepping stone role right now. He really has been since he showed up on the main roster four years ago. But at least he's a babyface again. He's involved in something notable. And it hopefully it should be a really good match. I was kind of underwhelmed by their Survivor Series match two and a half years ago. So hopefully this is better with the roles reversed. But I'm looking forward to it. Rollins beats Nakamura. Cesaro comes in. I don't know if he has to beat Rollins, but it would be nice if he beat him at WrestleMania. Um, but yeah, no, I, I'm liking where this is going, and I thought this was a good segment. You know, Nakamura laid out Rollins to make you think that he could beat Rollins on Sunday. He won't. Um, but I thought this was a good segment, and it set up what should be a very fun match of the pay-per-view. We then had Dominic and Rey Mysterio taking on the Street Profits in a babyface and babyface match. Uh, it was a fun match while it lasted, but there really wasn't anything to it. It went all of a few minutes. It was hard to care. This entire tag team division is a fucking mess. They have four teams, which is twice as many as Raw, but none of these teams mean anything. That's the problem. The Profits are probably the most credible of any team on this show. Root and Ziggler won the belts two months ago, over two months ago. They haven't defended them since. I'm not a big fan of Root and Ziggler as a tag team. You know, Ziggler at this point has long overstayed his welcome. Rude should be doing a lot more than he is. Um, Otis and Gable, who cares? I like the guys, but the tag team is just not interesting. And then Dominic and Ray have been so creatively damaged that literally whenever they give them like one ounce of momentum, like they did here, they beat the Profits in like a matter of minutes. They immediately lost to Otis and Chad Gable. So they put up a video, and both matches were fine, but again, way too short to really mean anything. They put up a video on .com as an exclusive from SmackDown right after the show. And it showed Adam Pierce confronting all three of these tag teams with all of them begging for a tag team title shot because, you know, the Mysterios beat the Profits and Profits were the former champions and Otis and Gable then beat Dominic and Ray. So Adam Pierce said he would take it under consideration for who should be next in line for a SmackDown tag team title opportunity. As I've said multiple times before, it looks like we're building to a four-way at WrestleMania and I fucking hate that. Um, just because we've seen multi-man tag team matches before at Mania. They're always for the SmackDown tag titles. Always. They did a four-way two years ago. They did a triple threat last year. They did a triple threat three years ago. Can we just have a standard feud for the tag titles? Yeah, I guess it would leave the profits off the show, but... Rude and Ziggler, to be honest with you, they, they should be in the honor of the giant Memorial Battle Royal. They should not be involved in a more prominent match on the show than that. And I'm, that's coming from, from you know, a guy that used to be a huge Ziggler fan. And from a Root fan, too, but they're just not interesting as a tag team. They've been so creatively damaged that it's hard to care, you know? So, really, the Profits, after holding down this tag team division in both Raw and SmackDown for a year, really should be in the sole match of Mania, a lot like they were last year. It should be the Profits and, I would say, the Usos, but it doesn't look, look like the Usos are cleared. Maybe Dominic and Ray versus the Profits straight on wouldn't be interesting enough. I don't know. But the matches were fine. I don't love the idea of a Fatal 4-Way Tag Team match. Yes, it gets everyone on the show, but they would be on the show anyway in the fucking Battle Royal. Just put them in the Battle Royal and be done with it, in my opinion. Uh, Daniel Bryan was out there being interrupted by Roman Reigns. I've enjoyed every exchange these two have had on the microphone. Kind of more of the same. It was probably 
one of the lesser interesting exchanges they've had. Um, I thought last week was great, and the week before that was also very good. This was good. Um, not like, oh my god, I can't believe he said that type of thing. There is still so much ground they have yet to cover with this feud, to be honest with you. That's, this is why I was hoping it would be saved until well after WrestleMania, or right after Mania, or for SummerSlam, or whatever, just so we could really delve in deeper with this feud. Because I feel like it's obvious that Brian's going to lose. And if Brian wins, that's great. But Roman Reigns then just lost the championship on a fucking sea show. That is Fastlane. He maybe gets it back in Mania. It's a triple threat at WrestleMania. I don't fucking know. But um, I, I think Brian's losing. I really do. And, and that's fine. But I don't know. The, the booking here is weird. So they're making me think there's a chance Brian can win. They're, think, they're making me think it could be a triple threat at WrestleMania. And then that's fine too. Um, I'm thinking that you'd be Roman and Edge, but what do you do with Brian? That's the question. Either way, we'll get to that when we get there. We'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But as far as this segment is concerned, I thought it was well done. It was a good segment. Um, I thought this was great. So we had Corbin and Zayn one-on-one. The match wasn't great, but what I thought about, what, what I thought was great about this was the literal pre-match video package. We actually had a pre-match video package for this match. And it wasn't obviously taken seriously. It was all done in jest. And I don't know if I've ever seen this before. Especially for two guys of this caliber. Like, it wasn't like Santino versus R-Truth or some shit. Like, these are two top talents, former champions, you know? So they've been at odds for weeks. They've been teaming on occasion. Thank God they are not entering the tag team division. They have a match here, but it was preceded by a package where they were saying the you know narrator the the person who uh, did the voiceover for the for the match for the video package he had said that it is the least anticipated match in WWE history he had mentioned that um you know unfortunately there will be a winner but thankfully there will be a loser um so it was just great i thought it was done it was done in jest it was like a 30 second package i thought that was hilarious it made the match more bearable because without that this would have just been complete throwaway the match was whatever it was fine while it lasted but it's hard to care about heel and heel matches and it was way too short regardless so it was short and sweet it was exactly what it needed to be i'll say that much and then immediately afterward corbin or not corbin uh, kevin owens was on commentary for this match he was shown, again, for the second straight week in a row, interacting with Sami Zayn backstage beforehand. Sami Zayn loses, gets in the face of Kevin Owens, and then Sami just fucking blasts him. He, he walks away, then he just blasts him with this halluva kick right to the side of the head. I wouldn't be surprised if Owens told him, hey, lay it in because they're friends. It looked brutal. And then Zayn kind of just, you know, yelled over him for a minute before walking away. This looks like the setup for Brian. Why do I keep saying Brian and Corbin and all these other people? Zayn and Owens, one-on-one at WrestleMania. And that's awesome. I know it feels forced and random aside from the last two weeks, but there is enough history between the two that I'm already sold on the match. And you got to remember, too, three years ago, actually, not even three years ago, five years ago, five years ago, Sami Zayn got called up to the main roster. And it looked like they were going to give him the Intercontinental Championship match of Mania against Kevin Owens one-on-one, which they fucking should have. That latter match was great, but it really should have been Zayn and Owens one-on-one in Mania. Yes, they went on to have that match at Battleground and at Payback, but it really should have happened at WrestleMania. I will take no, you know, take no other opinions on this than it should have been Zayn and Owens one-on-one at WrestleMania 32. We didn't get it. They were both involved in the latter match, which was amazing, but it really should have been a singles match. It looks like we're getting it this year, which is great. But what makes it interesting is that the roles are actually reversed. Zayn's the heel, Owens is the babyface, and I love this for a few for a few different reasons. You know, both guys have done very good work over the last year, more so Sammy than Owens. Owens has had his moments, and then he would falter. You know, he'll be involved in a top-tier feud with a Roman Reigns or a Seth Rollins, and then he'll immediately just go back to doing nothing right afterward. Um, it, so it's nice that he's on the card, and I say that like it's, you know, I, I say that seriously. It's not like it's a joke, like, oh, of course he'd be on the card. Not really. They didn't have it in the former WrestleMania 35. He hasn't talked about this, I don't think, but he wasn't even on the fucking show that year. He wasn't even at WrestleMania 35. So I'm glad he's on this show. He, he, hopefully he will be. And it won't be a multi-man match for a certain championship, and it will just be Owens and Zayn one-on-one. Zayn has done great work with this whole conspiracy, intercontinental title stuff. I really like the idea of Sammy and Owens one-on-one at WrestleMania. I think that's great. 
Speaking of the Intercontinental Championship, we had Big E and Apollo Crews kind of going back and forth in a side-by-side interview. Um, I, I thought it would be face-to-face, but it was one of those split-screen interviews between the two, and it was good. You know, Apollo Crews' accent is still kind of uh, out for debate. Still, the uh, the jury is still out on that one, but um, it's not that it, it, it really isn't that good. It's just that he's inconsistent with it, and I guess he was he was in the accent I think, the entire time this week, so maybe he's not as inconsistent with it as I was saying previously. I just I just don't really need the accent, but the character itself is great. I'm loving Apollo Cruz and Big E right now. They're doing great work, and honestly, of the two, I thought Cruz cut a better promo than Big E did. But this was good. Had they just left it there, I still would have been excited for their upcoming encounter for the Intercontinental Championship on Sunday. But no, that was not it. That was not the end of it. So Big E got pissed. He's like, I'm not waiting till Sunday. So he takes his shit off. He takes the mic off. And he just darts out of wherever he was in the dugout. They're in Tropicana Field in Tampa, okay? So a baseball stadium. You see him kind of walk out of the dugout or wherever he was looking for crews. So him and Apollo just start brawling all around the arena. Not like where the th- where the screens are, where the ring is. Like where the actual baseball field is. And they're inside of a building, um, so it doesn't look like a baseball field. But I thought it was really well done. So then they brawl to the back. I thought this was great. You know, Biggie drove a fucking, uh, (laughs) he drove a golf cart, like one of those carts, from one side of the stadium to the other looking for Apollo, and then he found him, and he almost ran him over, Matt Hardy style, Kevin Owens, Roman Reigns style, Sammy Guevara style, so that was cool. They brawled, and I think, I think Apollo got taken away. I forgot what the end result was, but this was actually really well done. This is one of the best things going in WWE right now, is the Biggie and Apollo feud. This is great, and as I've said before, I would give Apollo the win on Sunday. His work has been so good that to not give him a title run at some point would be criminal. And I love Big E, but you can always have Apollo win on Sunday and then have Big E win it back at WrestleMania. Yeah, it's a three-week reign, but at least you had him in chase mode and you gave Apollo Crews something. It's better than having him get beat every fucking time, which it sounds like he could be. But hopefully not, and Big E wins instead. Or I'm sorry, Apollo wins instead on Sunday. So that was a great segment. Uh, I already mentioned this, but Bianca and Shayna, who, who gives a shit? The match last week was good, don't get me wrong. It's just that we just saw it last week. And usually I'm okay with rematches, but the problem is that Bianca won clean as a sheet. There was no reason to do their match here, aside from just killing time further in the feud between the two, which we already got in the opener anyway with Sasha and Nia. So there really was no need for this match. And it didn't matter anyway. It wasn't takeover level because, it, I mean, last week's match wasn't takeover level, takeover level, but it was still good. It never even got a chance to reach that next gear because of interference from Natalia and Tamina, who attacked both women, and that was it. Who cares? Why is Bianca involved with Shayna and Tamina and Natalia? And that's an insult to Shayna because Natalia and Tamina are terrible. The tag team sucks. Natalia is boring. Tamina sucks. Shayna has just been booked terribly. This whole thing, this was easily the worst part about the show. It wasn't egregiously bad. It was just completely pointless. And again, maybe, and I would hate if this happened, but maybe Sasha and Bianca become champions. They'll do the whole two belt shit again. Who cares? Um, maybe that happens. And then they immediately lose it to Natalia and Tamina because they already beat you know, Sasha and Bianca. I, I assume there's a very real possibility that'll happen. They'll lose the belt right to those two at um on SmackDown. Or maybe they pull double duty or Sasha pulls double or they would both be pulling double duty night one and night two. I, I hope not. Who cares? Just put the focus on Bianca and Sasha and have that be it, please. I like the other women. I mean, I don't care about Natalia and Tamina. It's nice they're incorporating as many women as they are into this. But, like, they don't need to be involved. That's the problem. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, they don't need... They shouldn't be. The tag titles are, are worthless at this point. Bianca and Sasha should not be fighting for those at this current stage. Maybe after Mania, not right now. So who cares? But we get to the main event. Edge's first match on SmackDown in 10 years. I'm pretty sure his last match on SmackDown, his last singles match, was against either... I think it was McIntyre. It might have been Brodus Clay, to be honest with you. It might have been Brodus Clay, uh, or, or Tyrus, as you'll be known on Sunday at the NWA pay-per-view. The guy is just problematic as shit. I used to be a big Brodus Clay fan. He's a piece of shit. Um, anyway, that, that's besides the point. So Edge has not wrestled on SmackDown in 10 years. Since March of 2011 was the last time, in a singles match. 
And I, th- I thought it was cool how they promoted his match throughout the show with video packages. They showed him beating Undertaker with the Money in the Bank briefcase in 2007. They showed him facing, was it Eddie? It was a match from, from 2002. I forgot if it was Eddie or if it was, not Ray. It was either an Eddie match or a Kurt match. I, I feel like it was Kurt Angle, but they showed a, a footage of him fighting someone in 2002 on SmackDown. Um, they showed him actually retiring on SmackDown 10 years ago with his mom in the crowd. So I thought the way they did that was really cool. We get to the match. It was a good match. Um, nothing worth writing home about. I mean, I think Jey Uso has really been elevated to, like, he's not a main eventer, but, like, he can hang with the main eventers, and he's had great matches with a lot of different people. This wasn't great. I mean, you knew Edge was going to win. You knew Edge was not losing. It was really more so to set up him as the special enforcer for Fastlane, which he now is. So the focus was, was kind of on Brian on commentary and Roman potentially coming out. So Jay loses. It was a good match. Edge wins. Roman immediately spears Edge to end the show. And then I don't think Daniel Bryan got involved. I'm pretty sure they just closed the show with Roman and Bryan staring each other down. I'm pretty sure. I could be wrong. Um, are we getting a triple threat at Mania? I said earlier, I, I don't think so. Would it shock me if we did? No, I just don't think it's necessary. But then again, if they don't do the triple threat, what do you do with Daniel Bryan at WrestleMania? That's the problem. But they have my attention. The SmackDown side of things at Fastlane looks great. You know, uh, Roman and Bryan, I have no doubt, will be awesome. Biggie and Cruz will no doubt be very good. The tag title stuff is garbage, but who, who cares? Uh, Rollins and Nakamura should be great. So, uh, was there another match I mentioned earlier that they set in stone for Fastlane? Um, I don't think so. No tag team stuff? I don't remember. I, maybe it was another match. But, uh, yeah, no, the SmackDown side of things is looking pretty, pretty good right now. Everything else, I don't care. Like, even Owens and Zayn, I think, has potential come WrestleMania or whenever they do it. The tag title stuff, I don't really care. But the women's title picture needs work. Not because they don't have, you know, good women. They have great women. They're just putting the focus on the tag titles, even though, even though no one gives a shit. But I thought this was a pretty good show, honestly. Even, you know, even Bianca and Shayna was fine while it lasted, even though it was pointless. Um, the Corbin and Zayn stuff was kept short and sweet. The Universal Championship picture killed it as always. The tag team matches were okay. The division's just kind of in a mess right now. I don't really care about those that stuff. Um, Nakamura and Rollins was well done. Even Sasha and Nia was okay. So I thought it was a pretty good show overall. It is worth mentioning that before the show on Twitter, uh, both Chelsea Green and Santana Garrett took pictures in front of the SmackDown sign. And it wasn't something they just kind of posted on their own. WWE, I saw, like, retweeted the Chelsea Green picture. So it made me think that we could see Chelsea on the show. I, unless I missed something, we didn't see Chelsea at all. So if she's not coming back, like, next week, then she should be back soon, maybe after Mania. I don't know. But yeah, I thought that was cool. Santana Garrett, it's a weird thing with her because she was in NXT for a very short period didn't do anything. Um, she disappeared randomly. And now she was in the Rumble. I mean, people are definitely going to forget about that. And then she might be called up to SmackDown, which is fine. But, like, I don't see them doing anything with her. I, I don't really know. I don't know. But Raw is getting Rhea Ripley, so I guess it's a fair trade. That I think Chelsea and Santana, they're no Rhea Ripley. But for the two of them, that's not a bad trade. If they go to SmackDown and, and Rhea goes to Raw. So again, good show this week from SmackDown. I still don't care a lot about Fastlane on Sunday, but I am compelled by Big E and Cruz, Brian and Roman, and now Rollins and Nakamura. So that's more matches I was looking forward to with the pay-per-view than I was previously. So maybe it will end up being a decent show, though time will tell. Thank you guys, as always, for checking out my SmackDown audio review. I appreciate it. Be sure to like the video, drop a comment, share the video, and subscribe to the channel for more daily content, including hitting that bell button to be notified every time a new video goes up, including exclusive interviews, whether it be with a young rock star or a Shotzi Blackheart or even a Daniel Bryan. You won't want to miss what's coming up next here on the channel. And there is more interviews I already have set in stone for the next few weeks, including one... I actually already recorded on Friday. That should be hitting the channel very, very soon. I won't announce it here just because I don't think I've made it public yet on Twitter, but it will be up very soon. And it is, it is a name that you know. It is someone that you're familiar with. So um, you're going to want to have to check that out when it goes up this coming week. But yeah, have a great one, guys. Be sure to have an awesome weekend. Um, again, like I said, like the video, drop a comment, share the video, and subscribe to the channel. All that stuff is greatly appreciated. And um, yeah, check out my Talking Smack review. Plenty more content coming here to the channel in the days to come. Have an awesome one, guys. I'm Graham G.S. Matthews, and I'll catch your ass down the road.